Steve Ballard, Labour Movement activist from London. I'm in the NUT, National Union of Teachers in England. I think it's important to reflect briefly on what happened uh, after the Second World War in England because uh, the arrival of the Labour government in 1945 uh, held in all sorts of um, social innovations that were really very enlightened. Uh, that were largely unopposed by the Tories at that time. You've got to remember that um, taxation, uh, we had a progressive taxation system that meant that the top earners uh, paid 95% tax on their earnings. That's, that was very progressive. They brought in uh, all sorts of um, uh, measures to stabilise prices. Uh, uh, they had uh, milk marketing board, egg marketing board, potato marketing board. So all the uh, that, that arose out of um, the war economy uh, that they wished to uh, carry over into peacetime as well. Uh, so there was a whole movement uh, of uh, civic planning uh, around housing, around education in particular, uh, the development of the welfare state uh, that was underpinned uh, by uh, a coordinated economy, a planned economy you might even say, uh, that was extremely enlight enlightened at the time, that was even ahead of what was going on in the Soviet Union. Uh, and this was under a, a capitalist system uh, that was largely unchallenged and unchanged by the Second World War. Uh, so all these benefits were on the basis of the enormous wealth that was uh, drawn into the UK from the Commonwealth uh, and also the role played by the, uh, the Bank of England. Now gradually over time the, uh, the, the, the nationalist movements around the world and in particular the Commonwealth uh, deprived uh, the British capitalist class uh, of the wealth that it had used uh, to maintain the British working class, uh, the standard of living of the British working class through, through the, the struggles that they had won uh, through union activity, the union, um, the proportion of union membership at that time was very high and it was very politically articulate through the, uh, the Labour Party. Uh, and so um, that went on until the 60s, as I say, the nationalist struggles of the, the Labour movement to, um, to uh, for, for the, uh, the rest of the Commonwealth to keep the wealth that was generated in those countries to, to, for, for their benefit, um, culminating really in the, the upheavals of the early 70s, the, the breakdown of the Bretton Woods Agreement and the whole new development of, of uh, unregulated um, inflation, uh, and uh, it, it unregulated bank activity. Um, and and so, so this, was this following the United States? What was the role of the United States in? Uh, the role of the United, United States really was to, uh, through its club puppet, the International Monetary Fund, to manipulate um, uh, foreign currency exchange rates, uh, to manipulate uh, inflation, which meant that they too were drawing. Uh, hidden wealth, covertly drawing wealth, confiscating wealth uh, from around the world. Uh, that on the one hand, of course, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, using the military muscle of the Sixth Fleet and the CIA uh, to block all sorts of revolutionary developments, in other words, nationalist developments at that point, uh, where uh, the peoples were trying to organize uh, the economies of the, so that the fruits of the countries were, were kept within the country for the benefit of the population. So in, in the period between the 70s and now, there has been uh, an enormous retrenchment in the UK. Uh, in, the United, in the UK, in 1972, there were massive labour movement struggles, uh, particularly the, the miners. Uh, that one, um, inflation was running very high. Uh, the economy was basically out of control uh, because of the... Um, uh, the OPEC states, the oil states, uh, hiking up um, oil prices in order that the, the wealth that was generated through the, the whole oil industry would stay in the countries where it was generated, where the oil came from, and this caused all sorts of problems for, uh, for capitalism. Uh, and the miners were also, which led to the inflation, and the miners demanded wage rise to keep, uh, to keep in line with inflation, and they won those uh, uh, they forced it, they overthrew the government, they brought the downfall of a government and they won their uh, massive uh, uh, industrial action. They won the wage increases. Uh, the incoming Labour government did was to br bring in legislation against trade union activity. Uh, but the trade union movement had no truck with that and when they tried to impose, uh, to lock up some, some uh, dockers at that stage, within 
hours of them locking them up. Within days, uh, hundreds of thousands of people have stomped off the job, an, un an unofficial, undeclared general strike, which meant that the government was forced to release the dockers in no time at all. Uh, that's in 1972. It's, it's, one, it was, it, it's a crucial year to study the, the history of the developments of that particular year, the, the reasons why it happened and why that was such a break point in the, in the, the, the British Labour movement. But they did manage to successfully lock up some, uh, some the, the building workers, the construction industry, uh, then uh, demanded wage increases similar to the ones that the, the miners had won because their wages had slipped behind uh, and in the end they did win a massive increase. Um, uh, it was the first industrial action of that kind by the disorganized construction industry. Construction is always fragmented. Um, but they did, the, the, in, the incoming government, the Tory government, subsequent Tory government, did bring in um, anti-trade union legislation that has been used against the, uh, the, the, the British Labour movement ever since. Um, the purpose for all this preamble, really, is that the working class, the British Labour movement, has been hampered by this anti-trade union le legislation ever since. So whenever the working class has, uh, has organised and said, look, we need to change, you know, we, we need to organise a strike to defend jobs, to defend conditions, to defend services, um, uh, the courts have increasingly blocked industrial action. Uh, and just recently, uh, um, uh, the working class, in particular on the question of pensions, has organised a, a, a national stoppage where three, three million people came out uh, they were, the courts weren't able to stop them uh, on the one hand and, the, and a bunch of construction workers, a, a tiny group of uh, unofficial workers has organised the biggest um, indus, unofficial action in, in the UK uh, just in the last month uh, in December uh, for a long, long time. So there's, uh, in the labour movement there's tremendous anger and resentment uh, at the way that the, the, the welfare state is being dismantled, jobs are being uh, uh, lost all over the place, and the labour and the labour leaders, the, the, the labour and trade union leaders, were well, the labour leaders certainly. Um, Miliband and before him, the other labour leaders have basically said, uh, "Too bad, you've got to suffer," uh, and that's now causing a, a major conflict. Um, of course, it's not only the organised labour movement that's that's finding it's uh, that it can no longer carry on the way that it was. Uh, the, uh, the the uprising in Tottenham. Um, I, I live only two miles. I live in Harringay. Uh, it's only two miles from where I live, uh, and the schools that I worked in, uh, most of the kids that, that, that were on the streets that night, uh, a, good, a fair number of them will have been at the teachers at the schools that I that I worked with. Um, uh, it, it was um, it was an expression of the anger and the absence of any alternative, any way forward, any understanding, any prospect that they had any future with the way things that, we, that we're going at the moment, and the Occupy movement that's that's come from nowhere really uh, is also an expression of. Uh, people who, who don't come from a traditional organised labour movement background or even necessarily a socialist background to say this has got to stop, we've got to find a different way of carrying on. Uh, so um, in London there are lots of movements, uh, you know, looking for different ways to overcome this uh, crisis um, and also not so many, but uh, there's a whole number of people from uh, the non-traditional left who are saying we've got to deal with this even environmental crisis as well. So, so why don't you talk about the struggles within the trade union movement uh, that led to the formation of this uh, Stewards Council, how it was organized, what its role has been, and, and that kind of thing. How, how did it come about? Yeah, the trade union hierarchy, uh, the, the bureaucracy, a lot of people call them, but the, the leadership of the, la the, the trade union movement in uh, London, I in the UK, is not, um, is not homogeneous. Uh, some uh, have a, a greater commitment and an understanding of uh, uh, the, the lengths to which capitalism will go. Uh, to prevent the working class from going forward and exploring different ways of um, bringing together those people who uh, are not prepared to kowtow uh, to the Labour leadership's line that there's nothing we can do, we've all got to accept uh, that capitalism must continue to exist. Um, 
And one of the key players uh, in this uh, in this narrative is uh, Bob Crow, the um, the very popular leader of the uh, the transport union. Um, who put together? Who um, won through his uh, national executive? Uh, you know, which also has some you know ordinary people on it, including right wingers who are supporters of the Labour Party. But nevertheless, won through his executive a small donation, something of the order of two thousand uh, pounds, that some conferences be set up uh, to attract uh, shop stewards, uh, uh, shop floor activists. Um, uh, from around the UK to set up a, a, a different way of um, coordinating struggles against uh, the capitalist attacks. Uh, and this kicked off a couple of years ago uh, and attracted um, conferences of hundreds, 500 people, uh, uh, possibly even more, I can't remember the numbers exactly, um, when I attended them, um, where it was clear that you had um, the best representatives of the people closest to, uh, to the organized labor movement struggles. So all the, 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 the major unions, pretty well all the major unions had, had key activists there. Uh, of course the, the Shop Stewards Network is not, it, it's, it's a flat organization, it doesn't have that hierarchy, it's merely a, 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 a connection of people who talk to each other and, and try to uh, link arms as best they can. Uh, and for the National Shop Stewards Network to come together as a result of an initiative from Bob Crow and the RMT was a very big step forward. It was a very big step forward. Um, and it was, a, it was a great move by Crow. Uh, it was a great move by Crow. How to build up a, an independent movement of uh, trade unions and activists against the leadership, the, uh, the bankrupt leadership of the official Labour Party leadership. Um, uh, which is still what's necessary, uh, and that attracted all sorts of um, trade union representatives who are in, in a wide variety of political organisations, Socialist Party, um, com various wings of the Communist Party, some of which I'm not altogether familiar with, all sorts of uh, Trotskyist organisations, people call themselves Marxists and all sorts, um, and they were there, they came together in this organisation called the National Shop Stewards Network. Um, what happened then, uh, uh, the, the other context was that the, the Tory government demanded that, 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 lay, that all councils impose cuts in the local areas. Um, and in my own area, in Haringey, where we've had a Labour majority of, of local councillors uh, for a long, long time, um, not one of them actually voted against. They all said that the cuts should be imposed. So in Haringey, we've, had, we've lost... Uh, we've, Schools are sort of being privatised, youth centres are being uh, closed, uh, cuts to the, the, all aspects of the welfare state and housing. Um, and in the National Shop Sewers Network, uh, uh, of course there was a discussion, well, how are we going to work? What are we going to do with those Labour councillors? Uh, there was members of the Labour Party who were just passing on the Tory cuts and, in, uh, and doing the dirty work of the Tories for them. Um, uh, and of course, uh, there were those like myself who said, whatever they do, we still actually have to f argue with them, to, s to get hold of them and say, look, we've got to find a different way of doing that, and you just going off into your rooms and voting for this sort of thing isn't good enough. Um, but in the end, that... Uh, and there were a number of other people who had a similar point of view. That was misinterpreted, I think, by some people as saying that we... For forgive or somehow we let off those people or we're, we accept that these people should vote um, for the cuts. That was never my understanding uh, and I don't think there will, be, there will have been other people like me who think similar to myself um, but, and, and there was a, a split and unfortunately I think an avoidable split with the National Shop Sewers Network where, the, where a number of people from other organisations stomped off, um, leaving the, the National Shop Sewers ne Network not quite as representative of the broad movement of all the different political currents within the working class. Um, now, that, that we haven't reached the end of that, because all these struggles are going to be going on next year as well, and all the political issues that, 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 that need to be addressed in the working class in the National Shop Sewers Network will come up again. So, what role did the... One of the most coherent political lobbies of the, uh, the TUC, 
uh, the last uh, TUC, trade, what, union trade Union Congress. So this is where uh, the leaders, sorry, the second last one now, there's been one since, um, uh, was by the National Shop Stewards Network. And it said, uh, and it demanded industrial action uh, on the question of the cuts. Which is, of course, uh, a, a, a proper demand uh, for, uh, for the organised labour movement to make of its leaders in defence of, of the welfare state. Uh, we are against the cuts, and the only thing we can do as the organised labour movement is to demand uh, the only weapon that we've got is industrial action, to take action, uh, it, it, to demonstrate our opposition to these cuts. Um, and, and they organised a very uh, coherent um, lobby of the second last TUC uh, Congress um, uh, around that. And it was discussed. How many Let's have a think. It was in Manchester. It wasn't all that big. It was about three hundred people, um, but it was the coherence. Uh, I don't want to make too much of this, but it, uh, it was a very. Um, it was a street demonstration. It was out there in the street, uh, and all the all the delegates at that TUC Congress knew what all those people outside were demanding and they must have known whether they acknowledged it or not that those 300 people represented millions more behind them that, that now and so that congress did it did indeed vote uh, uh, began to put together a plan of industrial action that, that culminated in uh, uh, um, November the 30th when you know two possibly three million people uh, organize a, 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 the biggest national action uh, in England uh, I don't know since the general strike of 1926 yeah very effective so the role of the National Shop Sewards Network uh, was certainly to um, uh, was to articulate most coherently and most clearly, quite decisively, that uh, that um, labour movement demand. Uh, the, the, I have to say, the, the, this uh, the, this construction workers one that's that's been I don't know, it's been three or four months now. It's been it's been so inspirational. Um, uh, in fact, I didn't give a proper introduction. What happens is that the uh, the the, uh, the big eight construction employers have decided to do away with um, uh, a, a national agreement, uh, the Joint Industry Board agreement, about wages that relate to certain grades. Uh, and they say, uh, we're no, no longer going to employ people according to that uh, um, agreement. We're going to impose our own agreement, uh, which will mean that most of you will suffer wage cuts to the order of 35%. Um, and the union, Unite, uh, saw this, of course, the employers had to engage with the Unite to make it say, well, this is what we're planning on doing, uh, get ready. Uh, and the Unite said, um, well, we're not sure what to do now, but they didn't really organise any opposition. And then, some, of course, some of the sparks got to hear about it, because it's, election tra it's the electrician trades that are originally get that are going to get hit first, and then they'll move on to the scaffolders, the plumbers, the, the, you know, all the other people. But it was the, it was the, it was the electrician trades that they were going to hit first. And a tiny number, I mean, it might have even been less than four, said, you know, this won't do. We've got to do something about this. Um, and they started texting each other and tweeting each other, uh, and, and, and more and more people get, became involved, uh, and they thought, well, we're meeting upstairs in a pub, and then more and more people said, no, no, we're coming along, and then eventually 500, uh, that first meeting they had, 500 people turned up. Now, this is, uh, um, and from that they organized a small committee, and they, they began to start a program of picketing the major employers. Um, this is all unofficial. This is in the opposition, in the face of opposition, some serious opposition from uh, the key uh, employer of, of Unite, the, their union, uh, the paid employee of Unite, in other words, the official representative, the paid representative of Unite. Who uh, the first thing that he did when he heard that this this unofficial action was starting was to put to send around an email saying who on earth are these people these people I, I, I don't want to misquote but it was something like these people are the scum of the earth they're just a pain in the ass for the unite um, and it was 
It was magnificent. It was such an experience to be in another meeting where there were, I don't know, three, four hundred uh, construction workers and this man had to stand up in front of them. And one of the key organisers, the unofficial organisers, who brought all these people together said, you're a rat! What are we, why, you know, why are we, we don't want to be on this platform together any longer than we have to, but we've got to settle this dispute, but we're not having you say stuff like that against us again. And he was forced to apologise. Uh, it was, it was an amazing display of, uh, on the one hand, the worst aspect of, of trade union bureaucracy against the unofficial movement and a fantastic uh, counter-attack by the, uh, the, 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 uh, the unofficial um, uh, rank and file and they from nowhere they've organized some mass every week there have been big um, uh, pickets outside these employers outside sites um, closing down sites uh, occupying sites occupying uh, the offices of the um, uh, the employers uh, um, Given the police a right run around, uh, we got kettled as well. Uh, the role of the police, uh, uh, of course, is to limit wherever they can, but it's significant. I don't know, you know, they haven't actually lifted anybody, they haven't actually arrested anybody because as soon as they did that, that would mean that all sorts of other people would have to say, Hang on a minute, what's going on here? There's a the employers are trying to impose a wage increase. And the workforce is all they're trying to do is to organise non-violently as best they can to protect their uh, to protect their jobs um, uh, uh, against the cut again uh, you know to defend the wages against a, 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 an imposed cut that the union is forced to resist uh, and so this this is about the the um, uh, the role of the rank and file. The, the building industry, as I said, you know earlier on, is a very difficult organisation. Uh, sorry, a diff very difficult industry to organise because most jobs are transient. You know, uh, a building go, uh, 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 a contract is run by an employer. They recruit some staff. The building goes up, and the the, the staff are then let go because there's no more work for them. Uh, and and over the years, a lot of them have, have decided not to join the union. The unions, the unions. It's not just one. There've been other unions as well that have been very bad at representing construction workers in struggle. Um, the other uh, builders union, UCAT, where to get started on that one? Um, uh, UCAT, um, the, the way that it works in, in British labour movement is that uh, in order to have a seat on the general council of the TUC, in other words to be a big cheese in the, in the, in the, in the trade union movement, is to claim membership of you know uh, over 100,000 members. Uh, and if you've got 125,000 members, that means you're, you're more likely to get a, a title on, the, on, the, on the, a seat on the general council of the TUC. Uh, and what's more, on the basis of that membership, you can also cuddle up to Ed Miliband and, and, and Ed Balls and all the labour bureau, uh, labour hierarchy, because you then give them millions of pounds or whatever it is, according to whatever your pro rata membership is, and that means, you know, you, you, you feel you, you, you're one of the swells in the labour movement. Well, the trouble is, UCAT doesn't have that many members. So when they they organised an, a ballot for um, the the general election of a, a new general secretary, and somebody decided, not unreasonably, that the, the, the present the the incumbent wasn't doing anything to represent the ordinary interests of the, of the, of the rank and file building workers, uh, he waged the campaign against him, and it turned out that only fifty seven. A claimed membership of 185,000, only 57,000 votes were issued. And, and so, of course, he said, he asked some questions. How come only 57,000 votes were issued? He also discovered that in areas, uh, it's not my union, uh, according to my recollection, uh, where he thought he got a fair amount of support, nobody got ballot papers. He, th he began to think that things weren't as well run as they should be. And so he challenged it. Uh, and the incumbent uh, general secretary has been turfed out. Amazingly, the the challenger, uh, the the, uh, the man who stood for the rank and file against him, has been debarred from membership of the UCAT because 
he swore he said that the the employers I, th I think he probably said they were a bunch of fucking assholes you know something like that I don't think he said that the leadership of UCAT was something like that some people might say they wouldn't have blamed him if he had said that I think he just uh, criticised the, um, the, the employers hang on a minute that's what em trade union leaders are supposed to do so we use unparliamentary language for that he was thrown out of the union and he now may not, he was prevented from standing as a challenger in the general election. So these sorts of things, but now that raises all sorts of questions within UCAT. It does mean that most UCAT members, sorry, some mem UCAT members are thinking, hang on a minute, we've got to change the way that this is going on. This cannot be allowed to continue in this muddled way. Um, I don't know what the outcome of that will be. I'm not in UCAT. Why don't you talk about the effects of these cuts on the National Health Service um, and what that means to health, the national health system in, in Britain? The, the, the um, well, it's devastating all over the place. Um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure really that the, the effects uh, have, have really begun to bite. Uh, in cancelled uh, operations stuff, that sort of thing is happening. The key thing that's happened is the care that uh, that's available for um, uh, people um, uh, towards the end of their lives. Um, people uh, who are, are supposed to be looked after m medically, uh, but maybe are beyond uh, medical care, but need to be nursed, need to be um, cared for. Uh, the most devastating change uh, within the last two years uh, has been the impact on this most vulnerable section of our population that has n got nothing to do with class, nothing to do with income, because anybody... Uh, whatever their background, whatever their family circumstances, can find themselves unexpectedly brought to a condition where they need uh, a lot of care, uh, which only the state can provide. It, 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 um, and, and that's what the national, sorry, that's what the welfare state was built up over all the years to provide. And it's that, uh, that um, and essentially what's happening is that the government is changing the regulations, which means that uh, first of all, if you had any money, if you had a house, that has to go. Uh, the rest of the family has to bear the burden for the fact that 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 you are no longer able to look for, look after yourself. In other words, uh, making the family responsible for the well-being of um, uh, their elders in a way that, that that you know, it's just going backwards in history. It's just so going backwards in history. That's the biggest impact. And why don't you talk about the rebellion among the students uh, with the fees and the privatization of education. How, what is going on with education in Britain? Talk about, you know. So many things, so many things. Uh, but it is worth, um, you've got to remember, was it last, so only 15 months ago um, when now, first of all, the coalition came to came together, uh, cobbled, cobbled. They finished up being uh, uh, um, in government, you know, running the administration, um, even though they weren't elected. Leaving that to one side for a moment, but both partners in the coalition uh, made it absolutely clear that um, there was to be no significant change to tuition fees, um, uh, and the pledges that they made were. Uh, they also made the same pledges about pensions, but but sticking to education for a moment. Um, and then shortly afterwards, uh, they, they changed it completely and they started bringing in massive tuition hikes. Well, what it really meant was the the inability, uh, you know, uh, I can't remember the exact figures, but it, it worsened the situation. It meant the possibility of a student coming through a, a, a graduate course without uh, a twenty or even thirty thousand pound debt. Um, so, it, 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 I mean, that had started under New Labour before, but it was exacerbated considerably by two political parties, both of which had pledged explicitly not to um, to make the situation worse. And within weeks, that's exactly what they did. It was to do with the. Uh, 
the fact that it had gone so so clearly against what they promised only weeks before that properly enraged the students um, and they organized a demonstration 15 months ago so the November before last the biggest student demonstration since the 60s um, uh, whole colleges just shut down were empty and people tipped onto the streets and and most of them came to London enormous demonstrations and uh, what gay affairs they were as well this the, the variety of slogans that everybody dressing up a, a, a carnival at sorry I'm not losing sight of the fact that everybody was extremely angry um, but what they were trying to do was to say um, to make sure that their message was heard and sometimes they did it by dressing up and being goofy and lo and behold somebody got carried away and threw a fire extinguisher over a parapet not in order to hurt anybody somebody could have been hurt with luck somebody shouted watch out there's a fire extinguisher coming down and then of course the, the, the whole Tories went ballistic and started arresting people and, um, you know, doing all sorts of things. Um, by the way, there was hardly any police protecting that. It was clearly signposted that the march was going to go past that building. There was hardly any police around. The fact that a window got pushed through, was, I'm not defending it, but, you know, I mean, you, you might say the police... Did anybody say that the so, police would so withdrew in order that it so might have happened? So this was a mass student protest? It certainly was. And it galvanised all sorts of other people as well. So, I mean, this was... Uh, the, 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 there's another important development as well, because the pensioners, the National Pensioners Convention, organised in April, I think it was, 10-4... 10-4, 10-4, I can't remember, um, a, 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 a big demonstration. So every section of society, uh, you know, is, is beginning to organise itself um, in opposition to what's coming down the line. It's not yet coherent, it will get mo more coherent, that's for certain, not because I, if anything, any individual does, it, sorry, it's almost certain to, unless some stupid trade union leaders say, no, no, all back to work now, eh, nah, 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 nah. yeah, so. For years, the, um, the, the, one of the, Bro broadly speaking, ever, uh, you know, since the world, the, the Second World War, when I was talking about, you know, when the welfare state and the, and the development of public services came to fruition because of the the, the First World War, very uh, um, provision of uh, welfare services. Of course, there were a number of public servant, uh, servants employed, public sector workers, nurses, cleaners, porters, um, uh, civil administrators, most of whom were always. Uh, on fairly low wages compared with car workers, compared with miners, compared with um, uh, apprenticed uh, skilled workers elsewhere, even though uh, many of the, the skilled workers in the civil servants uh, had skills equivalent, uh, uh, because it was public service rather than for, for profit, um, whether we're, it, 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 there was an acceptance that, that broadly speaking that their wages would lack behind um, the, uh, 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 the 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 the, 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 um, the other industrialised workers, um, but but also um, throughout the negotiations, uh, the the private the public sector workers, so this, the, the the civil servants and all the teachers in particular, uh, always included in their annual negotiations. Um, uh, improvements in pension schemes. That was one of the things that you, the, the advantages uh, of working for in, in, in public service. Um, that your union, even though it may not keep you all that well remunerated while you're in work, uh, would make sure that you had a, a secure uh, retirement. Um, and it's um, and 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 the government sees that as a drain. This government, anyway, unlike previous ones and, and more enlightened ones, this government sees that as a drain on the economy. And therefore, if money is going towards pensions, instead it should be diverted to the banks. Um, and it, it's it's as naked as that. I mean, they they, they they say that that's what they need to do. Um, and the way that they, they've done that, first of all, is to change the basis on which the um, the pension is automatically upgraded every year from something called the retail price index to the CPI and I forgot what it stands for um, 
uh, thank you, well remembered. Um, and it, it makes, in, in my union, it makes, it changes the, a teacher, an average teacher, uh, gets a, a salary of £10,000 a year. Because the average teacher is a woman uh, whose career has been broken by pregnancies and uh, uh, other family care. Um, and, and, and because of that, she broadly speaking, won't have reached the, 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 the higher grades. So the average pension of a, of a, of a teacher is only £10,000. Um, and if one of a, a teacher on £10,000 was to uh, go on uh, for, to live for 25 years on that pension, it would make a difference of £35,000. That's a, a big difference um, to, a, to a teacher. And the government thinks, yeah, that's that's too bad. You know, that's that's what we're going to do. We're just going to oppose that. There was no negotiation with any trade unions at all because it's within the government remit. They they can do ju just that by legislation. And to a certain extent, the unions, unless they um, organise to prevent it, they they won't even. There was no. They were consulted, but there was no. Uh, even so, then the government can say, "Yeah, we heard you, but we're going to do it anyway," which is exactly what they did. Um, uh, and so, uh, uh, and then they, they uh, 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 having done that, uh, and this is for all pensioners. This isn't though. So this is this change uh, uh, applies to every pensioner. It isn't just the the, the 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 public sector pensioners that I was on about uh, a moment ago. That, that I was just asked about a moment ago. Um, so that that's one change that they've imposed. Uh, the other change that they they're doing now is to change um, to the detriment. Uh, they're trying to Im Im improve, impose another change uh, that it's more difficult to quantify. Uh, but in, in my own profession, it will be from uh, the basis of a, a pension based on your final salary to a career average. Now they're doing it to save money. Um, they're doing it to make our pensions worse. Different pension schemes will have different um, attacks on them because they are all slightly different. Because for in some of them, a career average might be an improvement. So they'll obviously have to think, well, there's no point in offering them a career improvement because otherwise some will be better off. So they'll make they'll they'll make a different pitch to different sectors of the of the uh, the public sector, and that's how they try to divide them. So it, it's. It, um, the key issue really is the nakedness, the absolute transparency uh, of the, the government in saying, well, all those pensions going out, they're obviously, all that wealth is going to the wrong place. We've got to divert it into these coffers that it's our business to make sure that just get fuller and fuller and fuller rather than um, for people to live on. Um, and uh, that's, that is justifiably producing a lot of anger, a lot of anger. Now the National Shop Sewers Network is the only one that that that, uh, that, that, that thinks it's, it, it's, it's raison d'etre, it's, it's, its reason for existence is to engage with rank and file workers and, and, and to, to get them to, to link arms and uh, struggle more effectively. That's, that's why I'm in it. And what has been the effect on people in England about the Occupy movement in the United States? Is there more optimism about what's going to happen in the United States? Or? I'm not sure how closely the, the Occupy movement in the, in the British media has been dominated by St. Paul's. Uh, and that's been a real thorn in the flesh. Um, because it's really put uh, the church hierarchy on the spot because the whole role of the church is to speak up for the most vulnerable in society uh, against the, uh, the, uh, the arbitrary confiscation of the city. Um, and of course St Paul's is the, is the cathedral of the city, of the square mile, the cheek by jowl. Um, and, and of course, um, broadly speaking, um, the, the church, the, the, the cathedral wants to say, you know, we we want you to go away. We want you to go. We don't want you to be here. We just want you to leave us in peace. Um, and now and again, you get some cleric who was saying, "Well, actually, don't you know? Haven't they got a point? Shouldn't we somehow be linking arms with, making common cause with them?" 
and that's that that uh, that discussion as um, occasionally bubbles into the the British media. The of course it flowed from uh, that brilliant innovation from Occupy Wall Street. Uh, and there are a number of unions who represent workers whose pensions were being threatened by the, the, the changes that the government were bringing in. Uh, uh, and some of them represented unions in public and private sector. So to that extent it was, the, it was a very broad swathe of, of workers that were involved in this struggle. Um, uh, so uh, recently there was a change in leadership of the Knight Union where um, uh, Len McCluskey has come in uh, from a, a fairly left-wing background. Um, um, in other words, uh, he, 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 he made a very good uh, speech uh, at the end, at the culmination of the rally. Um, what did he say? Do you know, I was there and listening. Probably said, we, we probably need to do this again. Something like that. Um, uh, and it's a great day. Now, a lot of these these leaders will have said something similar to that. Uh, the, the, I suppose I forgot what the question was. A moment ago, uh, you asked a moment ago. But the differentiation between the trade union leaders are those people who, who, um, the role of the government under these circumstances will be, will be to split uh, that 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 unity to break that unity, and there will be some trade union leaders uh, who are more likely to buckle, who are more likely to uh, uh, to take the responsibility to use their position their their position in the hierarchy of the labour movement to go back to their membership and say that was the best that we could do. Now it's all over. We've got to accept the grief. And there'll be others who will say, whatever happens, we are determined not to accept the cuts. Um, and it, and uh, the dilemma for the labour movement, in my view, uh, is that in the period of, uh, of downturn, uh, industrial action on its own cannot, um, uh, cannot prevent the cuts. And we, and we have to raise within the labour movement, this is a view that's not widely accepted with the National Shop Stewards Network yet, I mean this is part of the discussion, uh, about um, the cancellation of the debt. In other words, setting out the demand that the capitalist class is not entitled to confiscate the wealth that we've all been involved in pr producing for the common good, they are not entitled to, 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 to confiscate the wealth that has been generated for the common good. Um, but that, uh, there were still some, and in particular the Labour leaders like um, Ed Miliband, who, who are determined, no, we live under a capitalist system, and therefore we have to go along with the idea that the, the banks are in, in, in trouble, and therefore the first thing we've got to do with our money is to pay the banks, that, which is just a nonsense to most people. And you, you think, hang on a minute, isn't he the leader of the Labour Party? Uh, how come we haven't got somebody that actually speaks for what we need against that that nonsense that somehow the banks are the first people that have to be rescued. It's just, so it's this sort of, uh, these, this hubble bubble in the labour movement, and as I say, beyond the organised labour movement into Occupy in, amongst students and all sorts of people that, uh, that, that, that <coughs> makes, uh, the, you know, that means that what's going on at the moment is it's going to be a very interesting year this next year. I have no, uh, I'm not optimistic uh, about the, uh, the overthrow of the, uh, of the Cameron government. In the event that the Labour movement got itself sufficiently together that it actually challenged the authority of the Cameron government, Miliband would just say, I, I, I think it's most likely that Miliband would say, look, this is, uh, sorry, Cameron would approach Miliband and say, look, this is so bad, this is, a, this is a national emergency. We think you should join us in our government and make sure that you're on side to, to make sure that all these workers go back uh, and we bring out more police and we hit more people. Um, uh, so, support that. Uh, uh, sorry? Bill down with and, that. and Miliband will go right along with that. There's no evidence that, that he would break with that. Um, so uh, what would it take to bring the government down? Uh, uh, um, uh, what you're talking about is a, is a, is a change of regime. It might be a change of administration in the foreseeable future. But that won't mean uh, that new administration wouldn't demand that, well, the first thing we've got to do is to pay the debt. The first, you've all got to go back to bet, go back to work. You've all got to accept less wages. I'm sorry that most of you are going to lose your jobs. But that's how it is. The bankers have got to be paid. Um, and uh, and for somebody like me, 
you know, it, it sticks out rather. Isn't there a different way? Shouldn't we just say, no, it's not our debt, we're not paying it, that there should be no more transfer of um, publicly accountable wealth and publicly accountable resources into private uh, institutions. Let's just knock that off. The most recent event, of course, is, the fact, is um, when uh, Cameron uh, tried to uh, hold the gun to the head of the rest of the common, union by, uh, common market by saying, unless you agree to the right of the British banks to rip you all off, uh, we're not going to play ball with you. And, of course, the rest of the, uh, the European government said, well, no, we don't actually go along with the idea that the British Bank should rip the rest of us off. And so we're not going to uh, put up with your, the, the particular conditions that you want to protect the rights of the British Banks to do whatever they want. Uh, and, of course, he was forced to stomp off. He was isolated. But that doesn't resolve any of the, the issues that are going on in, in Greece and Portugal and Ireland and Spain uh, and all those other uh, economies uh, for whom, over the years, uh, they have um, been obliged, uh, anyway, they've been f forced to accept more and more debt. It suited the IMF uh, for these to be client states of the IMF, so that when the IMF needed the screw to be put on the British Labour movement, they could just say, we need to reel in the debt. So it's up to you now to hold the working class back in your, in, in your countries. Um, uh, the awkwardness, uh, when the National Shop Stewards Network uh, invited uh, activists similar to its own, the bulk of its own membership from Greece, uh, from Spain, to address them, uh, for me, I think it was a, a limitation, uh, um, a shortcoming of, of those conferences, that what was discussed was... Um, how good it was that more workers were coming onto the street. Now that is indeed uh, a step in the right direction. The population has to begin to take uh, control, has to begin to take responsibility for its own future uh, in a way that the current capitalist administrations are determined not to do. The capitalist administrations see the rest of the population as merely means for them to be enriched. Um, so uh, it, it's it's a, it's a big step forward for more and more workers come onto the street to say, not that way, we demand a different way. But what's been missing in those countries, and, and even in, in France, where they had big general strikes on the question of pensions, no demand but uh, against the entitlement of the capitalist class to go on being capitalists and screw the rest of us. Um, so somehow... For, for, for somebody who thinks like I do, um, you, you know, the absence of a, a, a demand for the cancellation of the debt, uh, for um, the abolition of the standing armies, uh, the abolition of weapons of mass destruction, the abolition of the entitlement of the most wealthy to go on passing that unearned wealth onto future generations is left intact. Well, that's how capitalism continues to maintain itself and without those sorts of demands coming forward alongside of uh, people coming onto the streets um, industrial action uh, you know even if there was to be a general strike like there was in 1926 in the UK um, still the majority of, of, of uh, trade union leaders will say you know that's the best we can do we better all go back to work now and, settle and uh, accept the grief um, without you know, political demands, demands change, that deprive the capitalist class uh, of uh, their entitlement to confiscate the wealth being brought forward, uh, we're not going to change anything. We may change administrations, that won't change the system.